In this two-minute Tuesday, I'd like to give you the tools to develop Revit content for your projects, focusing on consistency. I will also share the trick I use to make it easier for my team to use this content. Hi everyone, Alberto here with BIM Lounge. Don't forget to subscribe for weekly BIM productivity videos. Now, certain families need to be developed in the same common environment, say for consistency of parameters. Think of walls, doors, even toilet accessories. Now, I call this common environment a container file. Now, let me show you how to create one and how to use it. So out of all the container files, the one I recommend you pay attention to the most is the detail container file. And I say that mostly because this is probably the most technical one. And you see that this will require a review from different people. For example, I recommend having a structured review that includes graphic standards. So line widths, text, naming convention, and so on and then a review about the constructability. Now, of course, in this case, we're talking about drafting views because they can be developed in a separate file. And then you can just copy these elements over to your project. Now, what I recommend for the naming convention is that you pay attention to both the view name in the project browser and the view name on sheet. The project browser view needs to be, of course, searchable and it has to be optimized so all these details are easy to find browsing. And then, of course, you'll develop your own rules and conventions about how to lay these details out on a sheet. Now, another thing I like about these container files, especially the detail container file, is that you can develop families like detail components and this is critical because as you develop your details you really don't want to use line work and you want to make sure you have as many detail components as possible because they get to be parametric they're easy to edit and they're a lot easier to maintain another valid reason to use a detail container file is that you can easily work on revitizing your old cat details in a separate file you know other than the template or your current project and you really don't want to do that in your current file or your template because that would create a series of issues, including unnecessary and unwanted layers and CAD elements in your current file. Once you worked out and you approved all these details, you can either save them to your template, at least the most standard ones that you'd use in 80% of your projects at least, or you can just keep them in this file and you can transfer them to the current project whenever you're ready to use them. Another container file that's uh, quite useful is the fill pattern container file. This is where you develop your standard and custom fill patterns so that you don't clutter your template. Now, I also use this file to create custom patterns using PyRevit. So what I do is I create these custom patterns for Revit and then if I need them for AutoCAD 2, I can easily turn them into PAT files ready to be used in AutoCAD with the same scales and same settings. Finally, let me show how I use these container files in a very efficient way that works very well with my team. Now, when you first open Revit, of course, you'll have your current file. And then, of course, as you need elements for your project, you can open a container file and uh, grab what you need. And for that purpose, I hit Control N to start a new project. But instead of starting a new project, I go look for my template. What I want to do is either open a project template if you're able to lock the file on your network or just create a new file out of that. For example, if I need a detail, I can open that detail container file. In this case, let's try and bring in a fill pattern. I'm going to create a new project, hit OK. And now I can grab this custom pattern, copy it to my current project. And now it's loaded into my current project. Now, if you haven't set up your templates, I can show you how I did that. 
if you go to file options file locations you can add as many templates as you need and you see that i placed all my container files here so i can easily have my team grab all they need from the content that's already approved of course the top one is your discipline template and that's the default to start a new file but all the other ones are placed here so that when i hit Control n i can find them in this drop down menu easily also let me know if you have other ways to produce structured content for your projects thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one